Native people have no claims to land. We have rights to land. It's our land. Some of the rest of you may have claims, and you can press them with this, okay? But they take this vernacular, and they turn reality squarely on its head, and they convince people this makes perfect sense. Then people t keep talking about up as being down, black as being white, in being out, and all the rest of it. No wonder we're confused, but let's get over that one right now. Our land rights straight up are to 35% of the U.S. 48 contiguous states' territoriality, and we would need to expand the resource profile to accommodate that alteration in reality. But 98% of the territoriality is at issue overall. Of that 98%, about one-third is treaty land that belongs to us, was never ceded. Another third is bound up in territory where you got fraudulent or coerced treaties. And I mean fraudulent by way of people signing other people's names to documents. I mean treaties that were sent in after having been negotiated and the Senate objected so they rewrote the treaty after it was signed so that it said something completely different. The Native people were never asked where they were, whether they agreed. In some cases, never even informed of the alteration. It was considered to be binding law and a predication of title by the United States and so forth. You sift all that out in territorial terms, the United States no longer looks like the United States in the sense that it's come to understand itself. It doesn't have a continental reach and dimension. It's a fragmentary constellation of pockets of ceded land which are unable to coalesce in the sense that it would be necessary in order to mount the power projection in either economic terms or in military terms to do what's being done now. You starting to get the drift on this? If you want to attack globalization as is presently being formulated and projected on the planet, the point of departure, well, it's not to go out with a black block and break the windows of Starbucks, although that can be fun and I'm not condemning it, you understand. <laughs> All right. It is not to have a candlelit vigil in a march even with the most elaborately embellished signs expressing your solidarity with the armed insurrection, as they call it in Mexico. It's occurring in Chiapas in Mexico. Although those people are perfectly willing to support, the fight is there for them. We have something here. And if we're going to be of service to them there, because they're burdened under something called NAFTA, which forms north of the Rio Grande, we need to be about making some changes in the locus of the projection of the power that's entailed in NAFTA. We need to be doing what they're doing down there up here, in whatever terms make sense to us, can be applied here. 